Hi, my name is Ethan. Hi, my name is Ashley. We've had this toy car for a long time, and I've always wondered if we could make it move. So we started researching electric motors. There's three parts in an electric motor. The batteries, the wires, and the magnets. Here's an example on a small scale. When the wire is connected to a power source, it creates a magnetic field. Bringing a magnet close to it will cause the loop of wire to be repelled, which spins it around. As it spins, it inverts electric energy into kinetic energy. This is a stepper motor, which is different because the motor turns and stops at very precise movements. This is used in machines like robots and printers. You can see the coils of wire and the magnet. And here is where you connect it to a power source. This is an elevator door motor. See how it spins? So back to our experiment. We wanted to see if we could propel the car forward with an electric motor. This electric motor came from a treadmill and it has a heavy large pulley wheel that we couldn't get off. We also had a car belt, a motorcycle battery, some car batteries, and our toy car. We quickly realized that the motor could not fit in the car because it's too big. So we decided to build a trailer behind it for the motor to sit on and to propel it forward. We used the shelf for the base of our trailer, but you can use any piece of wood that's big enough. To make it, we attached the pulley to one wheel, attached both wheels to the axle, and then affixed the axle to the shelf. Then we fastened the motor to the shelf far enough away from the pulley so the car belt would grip it tightly. We added a third caster wheel so the weight would be supported better, and also put L brackets and a belt on to attach it to the car. We also spray painted the car to make it look good. I love the pink stripe. Last of all came the battery. Tony's Toys here in Grand Cayman was generous to give us an old car battery. And it weighs a ton. I can't even lift it up. We tried powering the motor with it, but it added too much weight, making it difficult for the car to move forward. So this is where our experimenting came in. We tried putting extra batteries on a dolly, hooking them up in series to give the car more power. That seemed to work better, but you still had to push the dolly alongside the car as it moved. Originally, we used eye hooks to hold the axle in place, but it caused too much resistance. So then we added copper pipe pieces and it worked better but still wasn't very good. Finally, we found these ball bearing wheel hubs and attached them to the axle. They made a big difference and significantly reduced the resistance. With that problem solved, we can focus on increasing the power to the motor, but not adding too much weight. We found some lighter batteries and even a motorcycle battery. All of these are 12 volt batteries. But as you can see, some are much lighter than others. Hooking three of them up in series increased the voltage from 12 volts to 36 volts, which made the motor spin faster. We wired up a switch system to make it easier to turn the motor on and off. One switch uses two batteries in series and moves the car forward or backward or turns the motor off. The other switch is what we call turbo. And when you flip it on, it adds a third battery into the series. Here's our diagram describing the electrical circuit that we designed connecting the switches and our batteries to the motor. Both switches are six pull switches. One is a three position switch and one is a two position switch. We kept experimenting by changing our variables to see what helped the car go faster. We all tried it out and we found that the lighter the rider was, the faster it went. We also determined that three batteries was the best number because any more adds too much weight and resistance to the car. 
Keeping the belt tight made a big difference, and fully charged batteries made the car go faster than half charged batteries. Overall, we discovered if we increased the power and decreased the resistance, then we would have more speed. So, we did what we set out to do. We created the car that was propelled by an electric motor. This would be more effective if all the big batteries would be motorcycle batteries and if we could get the big pulley wheel off of the motor and attach it with a smaller pulley wheel. This would change the gear ratio between the motor and the wheel and give the motor more torque. So that means the motor can spin faster and give more power to the car. It's like riding a bike and then putting it into a lower gear so you can go uphill faster. By the way, to do this, we had to get resourceful with parts and pieces and ideas for how to make it work. We went to the hardware store many times. A.L. Thompson's had many parts, Parker's had parts, the Battery Recycling Center, Kirk's Home Office, and Tony's Toys. Tony's Toys was very generous and gave us two used car batteries for free. We bought the other batteries at the Recycle Center. Kirk's Home Office gave us some used printer step motors for free to experiment with. We talked to many people and asked lots of questions, even some electricians. One helped us get the elevator motor and one helped us get the treadmill motor. This is a really good experience for me and my brothers. We learned a lot, and it was really fun riding on the car. If this is your first time on our channel, we'd love to have you subscribe. Thanks for watching our video. Bye! Bye.